It's time. Digikey and Adafruit present. Hi on NPR. This week's Ion MPI is from Analog Devices, ahead of what's possible, Lady Ada, what is the Ion MPI for this week, brought to you by Adafruit DigiKey. Okay, yes, this week's Ion MPI is um, the AD5413. Uh, this is a SPI DAC chip, and when I check this out, like I normally don't use these kinds of chips, but I can immediately tell what a great design this chip was. And so the people who are watching, who do industrial automation, um, or anything, you know, uh, with uh, architecture or building management or PLCs or, you know, mechatronics, all that stuff. If you need a DAC, this chip is a really, really nice DAC. Um, you know, I've used SPI DACs for basic audio projects. And so when I saw the capabilities of this uh, digital to analog converter, I was like really impressed with the care uh, that I could tell uh, ADI put into this. Um, so it is, you know, a DAC chip. Uh, you set it onto your PCB. Um, it's, uh, you know, got one output. It's a single output. The output can be either current or voltage. Um, you clock in data to set that voltage or current. Uh, simple, right? But there's a lot uh, more going on. So the first thing that I noticed about it that was really neat, um, you can read all the specs about it, is it's got a very uh, wide voltage range for the output. So the, you know, the power of the chip, I think, is like, you know, four or five volts or so. But the output voltage, right, you know, usually that swings between zero and VDD, whether it's 3.3 or 5 volts. But in this case, um, it goes to between plus or minus 10 or 12 volts. So, you know, you basically can give it a split supply input and it will give you um, a full sweep range output. So you can actually even see, um, you know, the op amp there and the, the current buffer as well. It's a 14-bit DAC, so it's, it's a pretty good quality DAC. You get um, plenty of bits. It's not like an 8-bit or even a 12-bit, which is what I've used. Um, but 14-bit, which is really nice. It's got an R2R ladder inside, which you, you know, don't see here. Um, and then it will automatically do all the, um, the op amp, you know, gain management and, and offset tweaking that you can do. You can even set um, offsets inside memory if you need to, 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 to calibrate the output. And, um, you know, beyond just the fact that you can set the output voltage between negative 10 and plus 10 or negative 12 and plus 12, if it's, you know, you go over, there's a little bit of over voltage setting. Um, it's got a lot of like extra details and built-ins that kind of fill it out and basically make this, in my opinion, if you've got something that you need to have an analog output to, um, you don't really need any other chips. Like everything is super integrated. So this is perfect for people who are like, hey, I'm a hardware or a firmware developer and I don't want to like learn analog. I just want to get this voltage output to, to bias something or control something um, or you know, to, to interface with some analog input circuitry or, or current input circuitry. And I, I just don't want to deal with all the messy stuff in between. And with this, you don't have to. It's like, you're pretty much like, Maybe you need a resistor or capacitor too. It's pretty much ready to go as is. Um, so the input is 32-bit uh, SPI data. Um, you know, unlike most DACs where you have just like, you basically just write the data to the R2R ladder and that's it. Um, this has kind of a structured input. So the first bit is just like a start bit basically uh, to let it know like, hey, yeah, you know, start listening. Um, the two bits, uh, D30 and D29, the address, this I thought was interesting. So kind of like I2C, you can have four of these devices on one SPI bus with the same chip select line, um, and each one of them um, can be addressed separately. So you can set the, the SPI address. I haven't really seen this being used with SPI. I've seen this more with I2C, but it's the same idea, right? You can have four of them on the same bus, you know, not sure exactly, you know, why you'd want that versus having multiple S, uh, CS lines. Of course, you can always have multiple CS lines as well. Then there's the register address. Uh, that's five bits. Um, and there's a register, so you can actually send it multiple commands and, and read data from the device as well. And then you've got the 16 bits of data. The bottom two bits aren't used because it's a 14-bit DAC. And then there's a CRC, which is really nice. You know, you don't have to worry about, like, what if I'm in a high noise situation or um, you know maybe my uh, signal lines, you know, are, are flaky or connector gets connected, disconnected. Um, you know the data comes in corrupted, and there's some chance of accidentally setting setting the DAC to the wrong value, which could like mess up your robot or mess up your PLC. 
In this case, you have a CRC, so you have this extra level of uh, QA redundancy on, on every command that you send. Um, and I think that that was, again, that's a nice little add-on, right? Because I don't see that often on SPI devices and definitely not on writing. I usually see that on reading, like when you read data from a sensor, but I rarely see it on the writing commands. So a nice little extra there. Um, and these are all the registers. They have stuff like a chip ID, which I thought was nice, and uh, you know, device ID. Um, you can read all of these. There's not a lot of them, mostly configurations, and then you can see the, the DAC output register itself. Um, but basically, you can treat these sort of like I2C SM bus registers, um, and you know, read to the data sheet. And they have, um, you know, some registers are you know they're shadowed, and you can write to them and read to them in one command. Uh, the data sheet has all this in, in great detail, um, so I'll, I'll leave it to them for how to interface. Um, so this is uh, what's interesting is uh, you know it's it's pretty well spec'd. It can drive up to. Um, a one kilo ohm load in parallel with two microfarads. So like you can really abuse this. And another thing I thought was really neat is um, you can compensate it so you don't have to worry about um, having overshoots. Uh, you can also do slew limiting on the output. So again, you know, if you have very long transmission lines, um, you don't have to worry about like, can, can I drive this capacitive load without worrying about um, having overshoots or ringing? It is something that's built into this chip that can manage it for you. So again, if you're not a hardware analog person, a lot of the stuff that normally you'd have to, you know, deal with in the field have like trimmer pots and like maybe adjust values depending on like the cabling and um, enclosure. It, it's all done in firmware for you, so it save you a lot of time and money um, and field rework. Um, there's also a ton of fault outputs on the right. Is the fault table. Um, you can see all the different things that it will warn you uh, went wrong. You know, unlike very simple DACs that cost a dollar where, you know, you write data and it doesn't tell you anything. It's like, you know, the data's out, you know, output, good luck. You know, you'll have to do any feedback management or error management. It, it all, it does all of it for you um, and can give you warnings. Um, the fault management covers like pretty much everything, including I thought was nifty is there's a, a built-in temperature monitor as well it's not like a temperature sensor but you can tell it like hey you know if the temperature of the die goes above this set the fault so you you know it, it can self-monitor its own temperature again like little details like this um that i'm like wow yeah if i'm doing something in robotics or automation or you know something industrial that's outdoors or in a car or in a you know train Safety is very important. Reliability is very important. I need to know when something has gone wrong. Um, think of all the things that you'd have to keep track of that can go wrong that you would require extra external circuitry, temperature sensors, um, or you know, uh, feedback op amps, or like compensation loops, or you know, whatever. You don't have to do it. Again, it's all built in. Um, they're also just kind of neat. They have an internal oscillator diagnostics. So the internal you know processor inside has. Uh, a uh, one megahertz clock rate, um, and uh, it will automatically like update a counter inside. And you can read that counter, and it will that will let you know if you know, due to temperature or um, maybe physical stress, uh, the the oscillator is out of sync. So I thought that was like kind of neat. Also, you can send like this cool 07 dead code. So interesting. Um, another nice thing I, I noticed is. Uh, if you want to do like a software reset, you don't just like write a random value to register because of course you could accidentally set it. You have to be very specific. There's like multiple commands you have to send in specific order uh, in order to do a software reset. So if you're writing the firmware, it's really easy, but you don't have to worry about, you know, your code jumping to the wrong location, data accidentally getting corrupted, a loose connector, accidentally sending uh, it, a soft reset and the whole system, you know, flies back to the original location uh, possibly damaging itself if it's connected to like some gigantic servo motor. And uh, finally, there's an eval board. Um, I picked one up, but it pretty much looks like this. There's like this connector on the side. It looks like there's a, a development kit that it can plug into, but it breaks out all the, the pads and connectors and then uh, the power supplies go onto the top. Uh, so I think, yeah, you know, if, if I think this chip is great if you're an electrical engineer, you do not want to mess with analog. You don't want to have the risk of getting have something going wrong with the analog section and you want to sort of depend on the people who know what they're doing analog devices it's pretty clear that they've seen every possible failure and added a fault mode or like a, a feedback register 
um, or or at some self-monitoring hardware. Um, I, you know, everything that I saw was like, oh yeah, that could happen, that could happen. But if you're an engineer, you may not think of all these things that could happen to your hardware. If you go to the data sheet and just do everything they could recommend, uh, you're going to be way ahead when it comes to reliability testing of your hardware. So. Like at some point, an FAQ can eventually become silicon. Yes. No, pretty much. <laughs> like every time they had a customer say, like, yeah. your thing broke. And they're like, well, what happened? Oh, it turns out the die, well, some, the oscillator yeah. got, you know, so the chip got hit. Uh, you know, it got vibrated and the oscillator got out of sync and, you know, now it's not working quite right. Um, that would have been caught by, you know, the oscillator monitor. I mean, they've never seen an oscillator monitor before, but it must be there for a reason. So, like, if you use this chip, add that test, right? Every every watchdog cycle, check the die temperature, check the, you know, the, the oscillator monitor, check the feedback monitor. All these things that they have, put that in. I also like that every time you read data from a register, the fault bit is the top bit. Like, you, they force you to look at it. They're like, look at these errors. Look at this thing that could have gone wrong, right? They, you can't escape it. It must be fun to make something that lights it all up. Like, it, everything just yeah. failed. And no, it, like, it tells you when something's yeah. gone wrong. So, you know, high reliability electronics, I love seeing it. Um, you know, I deal with a lot of my electronics are, are, to be honest, they're not high reliability. They're not designed for it. Uh, they're kind of meant for uh, consumer electronics. So taking a, a dive, taking a look at this kind of um, electronics, and it, you're not paying military prices. It's still consumer prices, um, but you get uh, good industry reliability in this chip. All right. It's available on DigiKey. Go to DigiKey site. Short URL is digikey.com forward slash short forward slash P-B-Q-Z-C-H-N-R, or you can just search for AD5413BCPZ. That's right. Or AD5413. And that is this week's IMPI. I'm MPI. I'm MPI.